Good evening. This is Gloria Taylor Brown bringing you a gathering of priestesses. This is our 43rd edition of the show. We're really pleased to get this far along in this many shows. And tonight we have with us Rianne Newland, who is going to be showing us her brand new oracle that she has created. She has illustrated and, uh, and uh, created the uh, theme behind it as well as uh, our dear co-host, Miss Raven, Miss Catherine Ravenwood, who is coming up to us from Albuquerque, New Mexico. She says she's recovering from the flu a little bit, so we're going to cut, cut her a little bit of slack tonight. Thank you. And Rianne is uh, just moving, and, and she lives in Sedona, Arizona. And so all of those who are in the Sedona area, uh, look for, uh, let's see, you've got an event, is that coming up or did that happen? We just did the Sedona World Wisdom Days. That and just, how did that go? That was fantastic. Okay. Really Rianne was, I think, in charge of, of volunteers in that event? Yes, I was the volunteer coordinator and we had about a hundred volunteers that uh, that event. And we had the High Priestess Barbara Marks Hubbard. Oh, wow. Well, that was delightful. I, I have always avoided being the volunteer coordinator. I figure that's a level of herding cats or kittens that is even beyond me. So I congratulate you not only of uh, uh, surviving that, but of surviving it with grace and ease and being happy, seemingly happy about it. Very so, happy. Well, I had some of my very close priestess friends who became the uh, heads of the departments that I needed help with. So it was uh, it was actually quite a quite a lot of fun. All right, that's great. I'm glad that you had that. And will that be happening again next year? I believe it will. All yeah. right, fabulous. So. Um, Anyway, Brianne has an artist, an uh, uh, mystic. Uh, she's done a lot of different uh, writings. She showed me some. She sent me some of her writings. Quite beautiful and wonderful. She's published internationally. Uh, she's um, uh, done a lot of things. I think you were did some interior design work as well as jewelry design and. Uh, I'm trying to remember all of her bio, so she's quite impressive. Uh, so, Rianne, I'm going to start you with a question that we always start with on A Gathering of Priestesses. What started you on the path of the priestess? Well, it's a great story, really. I moved to Sedona in 1986, and at the time, I was married, and we were doing quite well, and I was missing something in my life. I didn't know what it was, but I just knew there was a lack of something, and the best word that I could come up with was magic. I was missing the magic in my life. And one day I walked to the top of one of the monumental red rocks in Sedona called Sugarloaf, and I cried out to the universe, I'll do anything to have the magic back in my life. And I was struck with an amazing experience of hearing the voice of the goddess inside my heart. And the goddess said, I can return the magic back to your life, but you need to do exactly as I tell you. And she said, invite 12 of your women friends to come to your house to play, and I will return the magic to your life. And I ran down the hill, called 12 of my friends, Never had been in a women's group, never had been in a goddess group. They came over, and I remembered how to facilitate groups, and we became the goddess group. And oh. that, was, that was in 1986, and I ended up making it my life work. And I was ordained uh, in the Temple of Isis uh, from Conigal Castle by uh, Lady Olivia. Um, as a solitary priestess, and I have followed the path ever since. Fabulous. So, um, 
you were already living in Sedona then, but I think you've also had some travel since that time to other places? Yes. Uh, after living in Sedona for about 20 years um, and facilitating many events, um, I was guided to leave to sell my house and all my belongings and go on a vision quest which I was very surprised. I never thought that I would leave Sedona. So I sold my 3,000 square foot home and everything I owned except for what would fit in a 10 by 10 storage unit. Uh, put a little household in my purple RAV4 and I drove away from Sedona thinking I would be on the road maybe six months at the most a year. I ended up traveling for four years and I lived from the, uh, the mountains of British Columbia to the lakes of the highlands of Guatemala, Asheville, North Carolina, the Bitterroot Valley of Montana, Hawaii, um, California, and ended up back in Sedona about five years ago. <laughs> That uh, sounds like a really um, strong circle of the spiritual places on this side of the the planet. Frankly, uh, I notice that you know whenever you, people are called to places, they're f frequently those places. And uh, I've traveled to all of that, and I know that they're quite wonderful. And every one of them, it's when I get there, I think I want to live here for the rest of my life which lasts about three months. Well, uh, that's exactly what happened to me. And oh, I forgot Ashland, Oregon. Oh, yes, yes. Can't, can't leave out Ashland, Oregon. And I felt that too, every place I went. I lived, well, I lived there for, lived in each place three months to a year. Yeah. Was waiting for the sign, okay, this is your new home. I made wonderful friends. And I was totally surprised when Sedona called me back. And during the time that I was traveling, I lived by the beaches, I lived in the mountains, I lived by the lakes, and that's when I originated the Heart Wisdom Circle Council Oracle Game Counseling Tool and Educational System. Well, before we talk about that, I want to talk about that marvelous necklace you have on, because I know that's your creation as well. So. Yeah. Let's tell, tell us a little bit about this needle weaving you're doing. Maybe you can see it a little better. Yeah. You can see it a little better that way. It's beautiful. Gorgeous. Um, this is called needle weaving. Mm -hmm. and needle weaving, um, I found an article. I don't know if any of you are fiber workers or seamstresses, but I have always loved working with fibers and fabrics and sewing and designing. And I saw an article once by this, a woman who had created needle weaving. And so I learned how to needle weave. And what needle weaving is, is that you make a, a loom out of straight pins on a piece of fiberboard, and then you make a warp with waxed linen, and then you get a large needle with some beautiful threads. You thread on your silver and your beads, and then you take that needle and you start weaving in and out like you were making a tiny little blanket, Indian blanket. Mm. And um, it's very, very detailed um, work that ends up being like a meditation. And for me, I know that part of my priestess work always involves doing some form of uh, handicraft. That it seems if I'm not doing at least some form of handicraft, I'm, it's like I'm missing a real, uh, real part of my heart and uh, feel oh, incomplete in some ways when I'm not doing some kind of handicraft. I don't know about you, but I know that you also design jewelry. Uh, well, yeah, I've uh, done quite a bit of bead jewelry, and what happened was it got to be smaller and smaller beads until I was working just with size 14 to 16s, 
and uh, a very complicated peyote stitch type uh, necklaces and I was doing full breastplates oh. and uh, basically I wore out my hand uh, so I ended up having to have a joint replaced and uh, it's uh, I, I've got thousands of dollars of beads in my garage that I can't use but I, I go out and look at them and stroke them occasionally because they're so pretty and uh, I look at your your needle weaving and I think oh that looks really exciting and interesting and my thumb says no it doesn't <laughs> so uh, I'm just fascinated by it are you selling those in Sedona um, well right now I have a couple pieces in a shop in Prescott and they will be for sale on a new website that I'm going to be launching and on my old website you can see a few few pieces. Okay, great. So now let's move on to this wonderful new oracle that you have created okay. and, and introduce us to your oracle. Okay, I'm going to move the camera here so perhaps you can see them a bit better. Oh, yes. they're wonderful. Can you see that? They're wonderful. Thank you. Just delightful. Well, this is called the Heart Wisdom Circle Council. And this is a council of 12 wise women. And I wish that I could show them to you a little better. Actually, we can see them great where they are if you just touch them. The ones oh. in the back need to come forward, but the ones up front are absolutely perfect right now. Okay, great. So what this is, is that I created um, the Heart Wisdom Council to represent 13 different aspects of every woman. And they are wise women. They're, they're not goddesses. They're wise women who live on the earth who know how to live on the earth in harmony and balance and they each have a very distinct path uh, platform that they teach um, and it's everything starting with um, well I've got Mystica Mystica is the wise woman of spirituality there's Tara she's the wise woman of mediation between the earth and humanity, Helena, who is the wise woman of health and healing, Serena, who is the wise seer and visionary, Amala, who teaches about mothering not only children but our dreams and our visions, uh, Luminawe, who is the way shower, she teaches us how to walk the path of life. Bring and her in a little more, I can't see her. Luminawe? Yeah. Let's see. No, no, more towards the center. There. Can you see her? Yes, mm -hmm. now we can see her. You see her there? She looks very Native American. Yes. And then, um, and then there's Maggie. She's the wise woman magician. She teaches about the right use of energy. And then there's Marta. Marta is the wise woman of the arts and crafts and teaches us about our creativity. And then there is Carowin, which means holy, beloved friend. She teaches us about friendships, human relationships, but most importantly, she teaches us about the relationship that we have with ourselves and how important that is. And then there is Champia, the uh, champion of peace. She's our peaceful warrior within. She carries the sword of truth. She cuts through all the BS in our life, and she's also our champion um, and our mediator between our inner world and our outer world. Uh, then we have Gracia. Gracia carries her basket of abundance. She is the wise woman of gratitude and reciprocity. She teaches um, the importance of give and take in all things. 
And then there is Stella, the storyteller, and she is the scribe and the writer of the circle. And so that's a, a little bit about the circle, but I think the, the way to really um, show you how it works, I can use this in a group setting as a counseling tool, one-on-one uh, -on -one or for a group of people, and I can use it as an oracle, which I do regularly for myself, and I understand I'm going to be doing a session. Yeah, I've asked Raven if she wouldn't mind being your subject, since Raven does tarot readings on a regular basis and doesn't net get nearly enough readings for herself, I'm sure. So anyway, I'm going to use that as an excuse. Uh -huh. uh, and uh, I do want to point out that, by the way, I talked to Rianne about this and, and said we're going to have do this and Raven's going to do it. And I realized today at noon that I hadn't bothered to tell Raven about it. Wow. Oh, Raven said, yes, please, please. So I called her up and I said, I have to correct an oversight and I hope you're not going to be mad at me. I said, I just presumed you'd do what I want you to do, which is to do a session tonight. And she says, well, of course I will. I'll do anything you tell me to. And, uh, you know, that is one of the reasons why she's my best friend. <laughs> i got to say that. Uh, so anyway, so I am going to turn it over to Rianne, and you set it up however you want, and you and Raven are going to do a reading for us here, or an oracle. So okay. Rianne, it's over to you. Okay, great. So, so right now... Um, I will, let's see, when you get, let's see, I'll have to see how this works. So, can you see that when I hold it up? Yes, I can. You can? Yes. Okay, so I'll just do that when, uh, when we're working on the, the oracle. So, I've got some little cards here. I call them my face cards. Each card has the face of one of the wise women. Mm -hmm. And so this is how I pick one of the ways to pick which wise woman wants to speak to you. Good. So let's take a moment and tune in to the heart and I'd like to invoke our teachers, angels and guides, and all benevolent beings who wish to be present in this reading and especially the Deva of the Heart Wisdom Circle Council and the Council to be present to open the Mother's Mandala, the portal of wisdom that will bring through that which is most important to know at this time. And if you could just state your full name and your intention for the reading. My name is Catherine Ravenwood, and my intention is to receive guidance that will help me with uh, to be a better person right now. Oh, okay. You know, to do the to do the best job I can at being me. Great. Well, the way that this works is that it's a role-playing oracle okay. where you actually will embody. The wise woman. Oh, good. And that sounds like fun. So that um, I will be asking you to play the part of the wise woman who wants to talk with you. Right. So you'll be doing most of the talking. Interesting. And, and then I can interject um, if I feel that's needed, but I'll be asking you the questions. Okay. And the way to do that is that. First of all, I'm going to shuffle the cards, and you can just tell me when to stop. And I am going to ask which wise woman is the first one that wishes to speak to you about your question about what you can do in your life right now to reach an even higher level of expression in the truth of who you really are. 
Okay. All right. So, Amala, the wise woman of mothering, ah. is the one that comes up. And this is this is Amala. Hello, She's Amala. Wearing... Hmm? Very she... beautiful. I said hello, Amala. She's very yes. beautiful. She yeah, raise her up a little higher. Higher? Yeah. Yeah. How's that? That's, that's good. good. Not closer, just higher. Higher. Okay, yeah. that's great. That's good. Okay, she's pregnant. She's wearing a beautiful sari with a lotus design. Mm -hmm. And around her neck, she has a Celtic mother's knot, uh, which represents motherhood. She's very joyous and, and full and radiant as a pregnant woman would be. And I am going to grab her. Each, each wise woman has a beautiful card. Okay. That goes with her. On yeah. one side, poem, and on the other side is some writings about who she is. Okay. Okay, so I am going to read the poem and a, and a bit of a description of who she is. And Catherine, I'd like you to be thinking about why is it that you feel that Amala is coming to you. All right. You know, as a wise woman with a message for you. And also, as I read this, I'd like you to tune in to her vibration so that you can become your Amala self. And here is the poem. The wisdom of the mother I share with delight. Her loving arms and guidance sets our world right. I marvel at the power and strength that brings to birth everything and everyone alive upon this earth. We always are conceiving, gestating many dreams. The mystery of creation is woven in our genes. Be it other people, inventions, works of art, every human being has a womb that is the heart. I am full and glowing, life growing within me. I am the blooming lotus, goddess of fertility. I teach about compassion and practicality. The mother has so many diverse qualities. I guide the young with wisdom, devoted to their needs, aware that everything I share is planting precious seeds. The mother is creatress, lover, teacher, divine friend. She is forever joy, a love that has no end. So as you hear these words, what do they mean to you, and how do you feel they apply to the question? that you asked. Well, at first, I felt that I was requiring more nurturing in my life. Okay. And that probably is still true. Um, I live alone, and I have wonderful friends, and I feel supported by my friends and my work. I work full time, plus I do tarot readings and other things. But at first I thought, yeah, I probably just need more nurturing in my life. But then I thought, as you went on and you were talking about teaching, I am doing, I have um, been focusing better on uh, getting some classes going. A couple of friends are helping me get that uh, done. Gloria and I tried to get it launched in a way, and it didn't work so well. And now, uh, I have a class actually launched online, and I think that that's how that is talking to me, is to help me find a way to really bring my teaching out in a better way. I have a lot of wisdom to share, and I kind of don't get it done. Okay. All right. So let's do this. I would like you to access your inner Amala. So take a moment, and these are some of her um, her symbols 
Mm -hmm. And I'm going to read to you. And as I do, just picture the vibration of some of these symbols, and it will help you access her energy. Her gem is a pink sapphire. So feel the energy of a pink sapphire around you. Her animal is the deer. Her flower is the pink lotus. And her color is pink gold. Her tree is the elderberry, which is the elder mother tree. Her symbol is the Celtic mothering knot. And her flower essence is called splendid mariposa lily. And the qualities of mothering, she teaches her students the art of inner mothering, the art of providing for oneself compassion and nurturing, allowing us to blossom into our most glorious selves. So tune into your inner Amala, Catherine. And when you feel ready, just raise your hand so that I can tell that you feel connected to your own inner Amala self. You're a wise woman of mothering. I can tell you that I don't feel connected to any of that. <laughs> so that's probably why she showed up. Okay. None of, all of the, the pink, the gold, all of that, it's like, wow, that is just not, that is not where I am. Okay. And she feels much lighter and brighter than I do. Okay. She feels more. Um, she feels a lot more nurturing, and than I do. She feels juicier than I do. Great. <laughs> yeah. I think that is a beautiful. Um, so, would you be willing to connect to that energy, even if it doesn't feel like you? Yeah. Great. Yes. So connect on in to her, because she has a message for you, my dear. I bet she does. <laughs> <laughs> so connect into that juicy pink energy. And that pregnant, vibe, vibrant, glowing energy. Because one of the things I know about Amala is she comes to people when they're ready to burp, and they're ready to you know, when they've been holding on to something they've been gestating, mm -hmm. way overdue. So I would say you are overdue, my dear. <laughs> I'm sure you're right. You're overdue. And okay. um, so get in touch with your Amala self and just play along with me. Okay. Okay, so greetings, Amala. Greetings. So Amala. You have come to Catherine, and you have a message for her about how she can be more herself, but she was having trouble relating to you. So can you tell us what is all of that about? Catherine is feeling old and tired. Okay. Would be would be good for Catherine to um, have some more joy in her life and be more playful. Beautiful. So, Amala, what is she, is she feeling too tired to birth <laughs> to be a new mother? Yes, I think she is. Yeah, and yet there's tired. It's like taking on something is feeling a little overwhelming for her. Okay, and so is there a place that she can access a new level of energy that can um, that can help her to birth something new in a way that will actually renew and restore her rather than deplete her? Midwives. Yes. Very good. She needs yeah. midwives. Yes. So tell me more about that. Mm 
Well, Catherine has lately allowed herself to get help in new ways, but she needs to create the midwives around her to give her support. And she she needs to she needs to take support. Ah, so is this something that she has a hard time with? Is receiving support? Yes. Yes. Well, a pregnant woman needs support and love and nurturing. And yeah. so. And uh, she didn't get that when she was literally pregnant herself. She didn't. No. Just the opposite. She got abuse. Oh, okay. so, so that. That's something that perhaps needs to be clear. Yeah, I think so. And what if she saw herself as pregnant again with a creation that she could nurture herself, uh, take care of herself, receive love and support, as if she were pregnant with something that wants to be birthed into the world that's very valuable for people? Would that help her? That sounds very beautiful. I mean, you know, um, me, Catherine, has a beautiful son who is a wonderful person. So that's a beautiful thing. He's out there and he's wonderful. But yeah, I think to, uh, I think you're right. I think that would be a very good way for her to look at it, because I know what I do. Mm -hmm. is, instead of looking at it that way, it becomes work and it becomes something that I have to get done. Instead of creating a joyful creation. So you could think of yourself more as a pregnant woman. And what do, pre what do pregnant women are advised? Be happy, be joyful, take care of yourself, play beautiful music, eat great food. You know, whatever you put into yourself is what's going to come out in your baby. That's right. You deserve the best care that there is. Yes, thank you. Absolutely the best care, the best support. And I bet if you called for a group of midwives, you would get and, and enroll them as midwives. Call them your midwives. And so with the spirit that you're all birthing something and they're going to help you birth something, doesn't that, that take a completely different vibration? Completely. And so you're, you're, you're a new mother and you are going to birth this beautiful new program that you're going to be sharing with people. And you want that baby to be healthy and beautiful and be created out of joy, not out of stress or sacrifice of any kind. Right. And so this is the message. Oh, out of love. Out of love. Out of joyous love. So this time your pregnancy can be a joyous one. And um, I think that this message to many women who are Crohn's, who like myself, this, this whole oracle has taken me years to do. And now I'm just birthing it out into the next level of actually, okay, baby, you know, it's time for me to share you with the world. And um, I, I believe there are many women like us who have something to birth into the world now. Yes, I do too. I really do, and I think that this is a very beautiful way of looking at um, the way that a crone births. Since we no longer birth um, human children, but we can birth these visions and, and these legacies of our, of our wisdom. Yes, and, and, and that's important for us to do, because if we don't give birth to that and pass it forward, then it's lost. Exactly. Lost. Exactly. And, then so, we, and then we weren't good mommies. <laughs> right. right. 
And I think this is something so beautiful. So do you have any other question for Amala? Do you need any, any other guidance at the moment? No, I think that's quite a bit right now. I do too. And you can access her at any time on your own. Yes. And I would also be happy to send you a PDF of her card. So oh, that, that would be lovely. Thank you. Yes, that would be great. That would be lovely. Great. Well, you did very well. Thank you. How are we doing very much? Do we still have Gloria with Gloria, us? Gloria, are you still with us? Is it just you and me? Uh-oh. I wonder if maybe... I don't see her. Gloria? Are you there? I don't know if any I, of them are on. Well, I guess we got cut off. I see you. It says we're live. It's recording. Yeah. I still see the live button up there. Well, all right. So let's just go on until Gloria figures out how to get back. Okay. So that's a very interesting oracle because um, let me just share something. When you were showing the cards, yes. I was thinking, oh, that's a beautiful one. That's a beautiful one. And you showed the Ama, Ama, Ama what's your name? Amalie? Uh -huh. And I thought, oh, I'm not interested in that mother goddess. Exactly. <laughs> so, of course, she's the one who showed up. And uh, everything about how you described her did not relate. I didn't relate to any of it. And right. yet, I thought it was about different things, but then I realized it was a very, it's still a very big unhealed issue to me about how I was totally unsupported in my physical pregnancy. And that was, that was a very, very hard thing. And I know many women have gone through a similar kind of situation where they're not supported, they have a bad experience with their pregnancy, or I mean it can be anywhere from minor to disastrous. And that's a big deal for women. And I think that probably when women go through something like that in their physical pregnancy and motherhood, it's difficult to um, maybe be creative in other ways. Here's Gloria. Uh, she got knocked off. Yes, she did. Let me answer her text. Okay. Trying to figure this out with us. Um, <laughs> nothing like dual technology, huh? Right. Uh, yes, Gloria, we're still on. Okay, something's happening here. You hear that ringing? I'm going to answer. Can you answer? I answered. Okay. I still don't see Gloria. Okay, now we're on. Now we're on. Sorry about that, folks. We had a momentary bleep and we lost the uh, presentation, but uh, we managed to get through the reading. And if you're watching this on YouTube, you're going to see it seamlessly because I'll e edit it together. Uh, and if you are were watching it uh, live, I apologize. I will send out the link to you, of course, as soon as it's available. And I see that Charles and Sandy have uh, managed to get back in, and we're just presentation. Dis yeah, but uh, we managed to get through the reading. And if you're watching this on YouTube, you're going to see it seamlessly because I'll e edit it together. And there was the live broadcast. Okay, so it is definitely working. Uh, I started talking to myself. That may, you know, I frequently talk to myself, but I don't usually hear myself out loud. Um, it's, what I notice is I still have an awful lot of Oklahoma in my voice. Uh, does that ever leave? You're a lot of Oklahoma. Yeah. Does that ever leave? Girl. Huh? Anyway, um, I enjoyed that. I was telling Rihanna after we got cut off, Rihanna, after we got cut off, that it was very uncomfortable for me. And she said that was why she uses the face cards because people tend to pick out the the councilwoman that they most relate to. And so this way, 
I actually chose the one that I really didn't want to talk to. And yet I got very good information out of it. So I found it to be a very effective reading and very loving as well. So thank you. Thank you. Always a pleasure working. And one of the things with this kind of a reading, it's it's a playful role playing. It's it's basically just the willingness to play. If you're willing to play, you get some great gifts, and I think that's true of all of life. If you're really willing to play, and sometimes we forget to play yes. at life, and it becomes so, such a burden and seems like so much work. And I guess my message of the, and the wise women is love life, and play the best part that you can. And that's what will bring you to the level of becoming uh, more and more yourself. Very nice. Thank you so much. You're welcome. It was a pleasure. And what I want to say about uh, Miss Raven uh, and uh, her pink, uh, the, the pink of uh, Amala, is that Raven is the one that brought in the pink light whenever we were doing the one year program up in Eugene and she is the one that is the the priestess of the pink light so uh, I was a little surprised when you said you didn't relate to that because pink and gold were sort of your bywords for a while there it wasn't the way I was seeing it you know that pink light lives in my sword right now so I wasn't seeing it as a mother kind of thing so yeah you're right I guess I'm out of touch. Yeah. And the other thing that I was thinking about as far as the mother is concerned is um, Raven is the most mother person I've ever met. She really, really, really enjoyed being a mother. She really enjoys having her son. Uh, she has a real strong streak of Jewish mother in her that uh, she would like her son to call her more often. You got a phone right? right. Uh, so, and, um, you know, I've known her now for almost 20 years, and uh, the truth is, um, probably mother is one of the top things I would use as a word to describe you. Well, and I am a cancer, so that fits, but this was about me. Mm -hmm. This was what I need, and it was very much about mothering myself. Yeah, I don't. Which you don't do? No, I do not. Yeah, so uh, it's something you avoid, and I think that that's bringing that out is an excellent point yes. that Rianne brought up. I think so too, and I would not. I think she's very right. You know, when she said she shuffles the little face cards, so you don't get to look at those beautiful three-dimensional goddess women, well they're not goddess, the council women standing up there, you don't get to go, ooh, I like that one, let's talk to her. You know, I would not have picked that one. Mm -hmm. so, and that's the one that came, so. I'd like to um, say something too, just from the broader scale of the people that will be, I know there's a few people on right now, and I know mm -hmm. that many more are going to be watching this um, as we send this out. And that is that I feel that this message is for a lot of the priestesses that I know. That the Amala card and this message about nurturing ourselves, mothering ourselves, and also treating ourselves with the honor of pregnant women who are birthing all of these new dreams. I know, Gloria, you have some incredible new things that you're bringing forth. And many of us have been through some very trying times, um, depleting times, and I know that if I have and other people I know have, then a lot of people have. And so I think that this message uh, to, to all of you who are listening, um, it's time to nurture and mother yourself, uh, treat yourself really, really well and know that the dreams and the visions and the creations that you're bringing forth now, um, you're birthing into the world and they really are needed. And we want to birth those things in love rather than um, 
by depleting ourselves, you know, yeah. by, by hurting ourselves. Yeah, and I do want to point out that uh, this uh, Raven got thrown into this and knew absolutely nothing about this oracle. Uh, so, uh, if there's any fault, it is mine. Oh, well, there's uh, no fault. It was. It's a beautiful oracle, and it was a, it was a powerful experience. So it was very. I think it's very effective. Good. Very well, that is good news to hear, and Rianne, I'm sure you're glad to hear that. So it obviously works over long distance, hopefully without the technological bleep in the middle. Uh, but yeah, that was it was very beautiful, and uh, it was very interesting to watch as well because as the two of you interacted, it was interesting, and I could put myself in the place of uh, both of you the counselor and the person being counseled and and thinking about my answers what my answers would be uh, so you know it, this is something that is new Rianne has, has created this she's in the process of bringing it out uh, looking at how to bring it out commercially so as you can tell there's a lot of moving parts with it so we're uh, looking forward to the co commercial debut but this is the, I believe this is the first time it's been seen on video. Um, and uh, thank you for coming on and showing us that and allowing us to see it. You're welcome. I will be doing a Kickstarter launch sometime in April. And if anybody wants to get in touch with me um, right now, just contact me on my Facebook page, Rian Newland. And um, you can get some updates on when the Oracle will be available um, for purchase and, um, and some other really wonderful updates and gifts and, and surprises that I have in store for people. So are you going to be doing workshops in the Sedona area? I will be doing workshops in the Sedona area. I'm designing a course that goes with the Oracle that I'll start to teach and we'll be developing an online version of that. And I also do private readings over uh, Skype or in person. Great. Well, thank you so much for being on and thank you, Raven, for being the guinea pig. I, uh, oink, oink. Oink, oink, yes. You're, you're a very cute guinea pig. Uh, so, uh, Catherine is, uh, Ravenwood is uh, an expert tarot reader, as she mentioned earlier. She does tarot readings uh, both online and on Skype and uh, across the phone and in person. She's in Albuquerque, New Mexico. So, uh, next week, Raven will be the host of this show. Uh, I will be in Florida actually uh, facilitating uh, what we hope will be the beginning of the Goddess Ranch. Uh, we're, uh, we're in the process of uh, acquiring a property down there and we'll bring you more information about that as that comes along. But next week, I'll, uh, this is the only day on Tuesday where I will be totally out of um, connection with internet as we will be actually moving on that day. And um, Raven is going to be our host, and the guest will be Shauna Ora Knight, who has a new book. Um, she, I think it's called her old book is uh, Vampires in the Kitchen, but she has a new book which she is bringing out, and I'm sure we'll have more information about that. She's very active in the pagan community and in in a community organization. So uh, that's another thing we're all looking at is to how how we can create community. I mean, in a way, everything we were talking about tonight is about creating community. You know, about not living alone, about not being separate. You know, the idea of having each one of us having the midwives we need in order to birth those things which we want to birth into the world the classes, the lectures, the, the art, the beauty, uh, whatever it may be. So as we move forward with this program, we hope that you'll uh, let us know more about your ideas of community and what it is that you would like to see, as well as who you would like to see or hear on the show. 
uh, it's been a really interesting time. We will be coming. I will be coming back. I'll be back on the 17th. Uh, I think that I fly on the 18th, so I think I'll be back on the 17th. And um, I believe Carol Hiltner is going to be our guest that evening. And Carol is a brilliant artist. She has, and she's going to work with us on how we can create uh, wondrous paintings. Um, and uh, trust me, she has created some that are incredible. She's also created a number of books, and she's uh, a graphic artist and a good friend of ours up in the Seattle area. So uh, we look forward to having you with us. Uh, we do have a a group on um, uh, Facebook which is a gathering of priestesses just ask to join and we'll check and you will be allowed to join um, Catherine Ravenwood has her new program which is titled what's your title oh uh, you know, I forgot what it was called. <laughs> it's a it's the spiritual directions. I think it's called shamanic spiritual directions. It's okay. Launched on Mother House of the Goddess, Goddess Inc. And okay, it's, so it's also it's, it's also available on Goddess Hyphen Inc. Yes. And of course, we support and Goddess Hyphen Inc. Go which on is, my website. Uh, it's it's there's a full description and a link on my website. Yeah, it's Catherine, Catherine Ravenwood. And that's K A T H R Y N Ravenwood. Dot com. Yeah. And um, so, Rianne, uh, I want to thank you again. Uh, your lovely art and your lovely necklaces and the oracle, which I'm, I think is going to be just fantastic. Yes. Uh, I think this is something that it's very different. It's very unusual. And the idea that it can be used by counselors as well as uh, groups, and also be used by as an individual oracle, and that it's so interactive. I like that. So there's a lot of oracles which are basically, you know, the oracle says, and and people are reading out of a book what it means. So that I applaud you. Thank you me. did a good job, girl. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah. Both of you, wise women priestesses. That means a lot to me. Yeah. So I want to thank all of you who see this now or see this later on YouTube. Um, please excuse the little technical glitch in the middle. I will knit these together, and hopefully we won't have that again because we've we've gone through all these shows and we've never had that before. And uh, I, I've going to presume it was a one-of-a-kind type thing and we'll keep going forward so we'll see you next week and until then thank you for being who you are and doing what you do because who you are is wonderful and what you do is important and we really appreciate you namaste, namaste.